ARP is very, very normal traffic. You're supposed to see it all the time. And it's how we resolve an IP address to a MAC address. Almost everything we have is based on resolution. It typically starts off with DNS, could be WINS, could be NetBIOS, it could be Bonjour, which is like a multicast DNS. But basically we do a DNS lookup to go from a name to an IP address. Once you have the IP address, you go, I'm on a system that's, let's say, 10, 50, 50, 80. I want to talk to 10, 50, 50, 21. Whenever a computer, 10, 50, 50, 80, wants to talk to another computer, 10, 50, 50, 21, you've got a source and you've got a destination. And the most fundamental question is, is that host local or is it remote? And if it's remote, well, when we send the packet to our gateway, if it's local, then we can just ARP for it. In this case, because it's a slash 24 network, it means these are network bits, these are host bits. We're both on 105050. So what do I do? I ARP. What is ARP? It's a broadcast. Let's look at that real quick. So let's kick up Wireshark. And Wireshark is so good because you hear words like broadcast, and you're like, what's that really mean? ARP is a broadcast. Well, we can go ahead and we can capture. And let's look at our ARP traffic real quick, our ARP cache. These are entries that I know about. I know dot three, I know dot four, but I don't know dot two, dot five, for instance. So by pinging 10, 10, uh, let's see, 10, 127, 127, two, five, he's going to have to do ARPs to discover those. Let's do an ARP minus A, find string 10, 127, 27.5. And this wasn't there previously, but it's there now. That was dynamically resolved. If we come back in here and we just type ARP in our display filter, it's only going to display packets in here that are ARP messages. So let's look at it real quick. ARP, I told you, is a broadcast. What's a broadcast? It's a message to everybody. So real quick, when you build a local area network, sometimes even called a VLAN, you can have a virtual uh, LAN, this is going to be devices that are local to one another. They're in the same broadcast domain. So if I'm in 10, 50, 50, you know, 80, I can talk to anybody that's 10, 50, 50. If I wanted to resolve them, I could broadcast, which is shouting. The, I, the layer three version of this is 255, 255, 255, 255. It's a layer three broadcast. A layer two broadcast is all Fs. Just like that. So if we wanted to come look at it, you know, when a computer, and we see a broadcast as a message to everybody. So when your switch receives a broadcast, it floods that out all the ports. If you were to sniff on a network, you're going to see other people's broadcasts, but you're not going to see unicasts. We'll get into that more when we talk about man in the middle attacks next week. But for now, here you see a device that's doing a broadcast. And look how pretty Wireshark makes this for us. It says, who's got 10, 127, 127, 1? Tell 10, 127, 127, 31. That's the question, at least from a, a brief perspective, right? If we want to look at the details, we open up the Ethernet header. Super simple, right? There's the source MAC address. There's the destination, a broadcast. And here's the type. The type says, how, what's actually being contained? Is it an IP header? That's what we'd normally see, 0x0800. This says it's an ARP. Well, Wireshark formats all these hex characters for you, and it spells it out. What are you looking for? Ethernet addresses, MAC addresses. We're trying to resolve IP addresses. And again, you have a sender device, Synology. It's a network uh, storage system. His IP address is 10.127.31. Who's he trying to talk to? He doesn't know the MAC address, but he knows the IP is one. So that's what a request looks like. Would some routers prevent a client from sending a broadcast? Routers separate broadcast domains. 
So routers don't forward broadcast unless you're doing DHCP relay, which is when someone says, hey, what's my IP address? And they go, hang on, I'm going to ask that guy over there because he's your DHCP server. It turns a broadcast into a unicast. But typically, a broadcast doesn't leave your virtual network, your virtual LAN. That's why we create VLANs. You've got sales, accounting, HR, IT. And the idea is that each one of those departments is a different broadcast domain. When one guy shouts, it, everyone hears it. So if we had a, you know, if we work at Cisco Systems and there's 75,000 employees, you don't want somebody to shout and ha reach everyone. So we create these VLANs, which isolate that, that shouting. We try to group like devices. So just kind of looking at this, ARP is the process of resolving IP addresses to MAC addresses. When we look at these MAC addresses, let's just talk about that for a second. Your MAC address is 48 bits. 24 bits is referred to as the organizational unique identifier. The other 24 bits is your unique ID. Why is this cool? Well, look how easy Wireshark made this to do some analysis. Like you guys are looking at what's happening on my network. I've got a Synology device. I've got an Apple device. I've got a Cisco device. How do they know that? They take 00FEC8 and they reference it and they go, oh, that prefix is actually registered from the IEEE to Cisco. Here's a Roku. You guys know what that is, right? Just streaming television. Synology, here's a Hewlett Packard device, Apple device. Uh, Shenzhen, here's Asus, got an Asus motherboard. So what I think makes this really sexy is we're still talking about um, doing traffic analysis, right? We're scanning the network, but look, all I did was turn on Wireshark, listen to some broadcasts, and I can go, oh, look, NetScout. These guys are for doing network traffic analysis. This is actually a Fluke device. So if you saw that message, you'd go, oh, they've actually got hardware network taps in use in this organization. Good stuff to know. What also makes it really cool, kind of come back to our story. Let's say that I exploited that WordPress system. Let's say that I've got a bash shell. I can run TCP dump, which just takes packets that are, you know, just crossing the wire. And this works even on virtual machines because virtual machines have virtual switches. If I see another machine do an ARP, that's a broadcast, I'm gonna get a packet. I can look at the OUI and virtual machines will have an OUI based on your hypervisor a lot of times. So if you're using a VMware hypervisor, you'll have a VMware virtual machine. If you're using Citrix, you'll have a Citrix prefix. You can customize that. But for people that don't, I can now do some reconnaissance and do identification of what your hypervisor is. And all I did was listen to some packets to see that. Let me know what you guys are thinking. Any questions at all? We've covered a lot of concepts. We're covering ARP. We're covering, um, you know, why are we talking about ARP? Because everybody does ARP. When I do an ARP request, I'm like, hey, what's your MAC address? If they don't answer, you can't talk to other people. So everybody does ARP. Technically, you can turn it off, but nobody does. So instead of going out and pinging everybody, and if I ping 100 systems in 100 seconds, and you're running an IDS, he goes, hey, that was a ping sweep. But if I do ARP traffic, I'm like, hey, who's dot one? And then I wait like 30 seconds. And I go, hey, who's dot two? I can determine who's out there. They might be blocking ICMP, but they're not gonna block ARP. I can come back and go, yes, I know that there's a device there, but I can also look at that first 24 bits, that OUI, and I'm like, not only do I know somebody's there, but I know it's an Apple device. I know it's an Apple Mac address, so it's probably not running Windows or Linux. Could be, it could be boot camp, you can do stuff, but I could you know, just basically start to assume, hey, I bet that's OS X. And depending on how much traffic I can get my hands on, wireless is a little easier, by doing passive traffic analysis, just watching a three-way handshake go back and forth, looking at the sequence numbers, um, watching a ping go by, looking at the payload of that ping, I can go, ooh, that's a Windows TCP IP stack. That's a Linux TCP IP stack. And I'm identifying the environment, and I'm not you know, probing each machine and sending lots of noisy traffic over there, which is pretty cool.